Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Recently I've created a video about how I think Linux needs a strong software ecosystem and the reactions were as well as, as positive and negative as well, but I still stand by what I said and to prove that we need something, I created my own software ecosystem using a bunch of open source pieces and bits. So let's see what I used right after this. This video is sponsored by Linode. Founded in 2003, Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider built on open source. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Multiple distros are available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and of course Arch. The multiple server configurations make any app or service flexible and scalable to host a website, set up your own personal VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. Linode offers 24-7 support any day of the year, by phone or support ticket, regardless of your plan size. The simple pricing with monthly caps ensures that there is no hidden fees and a generous monthly transfer is built in, which means there is no large bill surprises like you get from AWS or Azure. Sign up today at linode.com slash Linux experiments to get your $100 in Linux server credits. The link is in the description. Oh, and before I forget, in addition to having great written documentation, Linode also just started their own YouTube channel where you can check out video tutorials and guides, information on Linux cloud computing, and guest appearances from various experts. Check them out at youtube.com slash Linode. Okay, so the main building block of that ecosystem is Nextcloud. Nextcloud allows you to sync your contacts, your notes, your calendars, your files, your photos, basically anything that you want to store in the cloud and get back on a computer or mobile device, you can do through Nextcloud. So that's the building block I used. I deployed my Nextcloud server on a Linode instance, which I just picked the Nanode, which is the smallest one at five euros a month. And uh, I just uh, installed it through Snap, and I know some people will be pissed about that, but it's just one command line, super easy. Nextcloud is a super good solution to sync with a Linux desktop. As a matter of fact, if you're using GNOME, you can go into the online account setting panel and enter your uh, Nextcloud server, your login, your password, and immediately get everything synced to the default GNOME apps. Now, I went the lazy route using a Linode, that's just super convenient and easy to manage, but if you really want to deep dive into uh, setting up your own Nextcloud server, basically what you can do is uh, grab a server at home, maybe even just a Raspberry Pi, and uh, store everything on there, and then you can get maybe terabytes of storage using external hard drive disk. So no software ecosystem is complete without an email address, and unfortunately on Linux there is no way to simply create an email account. So I had to use my own, I used uh, the one provided by my registrar because I own my own domain name, the linuxexp.com, and it came with uh, two free email addresses, so I created one and I'm using one right now. I tried using the default Nextcloud mail app, uh, which is a webmail, but it's super limited in terms of features, so I ended up uh, using the Elementor US default email client, which works Okay, not fantastic, but it's better than the default webmail that you get on Nextcloud. If you don't want to create your own email address, there is absolutely nothing preventing you from just using whatever the hell you want. You can plug in anything inside of Nextcloud, uh, go with Tutanoda, Mailo, even probably Gmail or whatever. If you want, you can use that. So now that we have the main building block, Nextcloud, we need to plug it in inside our computer. And to do that, it's pretty easy. You just download the Nextcloud application, which is available as an app image or a flat pack, and you type in your server address, your login, your password, and choose what folders you want to sync. Now, basically by default, it syncs everything into a single Nextcloud folder, which is not to my liking. I like using the default documents, pictures, music, etc. folders that you have set up when you create a new user account on any Linux distro. So what I did was create folder sync connections. This is something that Nextcloud allows you to do, and it basically maps the contents of one of your folder, any folder on your local hard drive, to a folder on Nextcloud. This means that my documents are not stored in slash home nick nextcloud documents, they're stored in slash home nick documents, and the contents of these folder is automatically mapped into the nextcloud documents folder. So I can find them back inside my cloud, or I can just re-download them to any other computer through the nextcloud app. That's for the files. Now I also sync my calendars, and this process is easy if you're using GNOME, just use the GNOME online account, I was using Elementor OS and I'm still using it, so I had to input the uh, dev server address manually. This is pretty easy to do, you just go to your Nextcloud account, you go to the calendars, you have a copy link uh, option inside of the little three dot menu next to your calendar, you copy that link, 
you plug it into any calendar app, basically they may be all support that, and it's gonna pull in your calendar once you've logged in with your credentials, your next last credentials. So it was pretty easy to do. The Elementor OS calendar is sufficient for my needs, not the most advanced one, but it looks good, it works well, I don't need anything else. I also sync my notes through Nextcloud to my computer. And this is an interesting thing. I didn't find an application that could open Nextcloud notes easily and that integrated well with Elementor iOS. There are plenty of options that can sync with it, but none of them felt native or good. So what I did is just uh, notice that Nextcloud, when you create a note inside the Nextcloud web application, it just creates a file, uh, an individual file for that note. So you can navigate to your Nextcloud notes folder and open any of those files with any text editor of your choice. So you could use Quilter, you could use Elementor OS Code, you could use Gedit, you could use Kate, if you're on Kedi, whatever you want to use, you can just open that file and start editing it. And when you save it, the Nextcloud app will automatically sync it back to your Nextcloud, uh, let's say, central server. And what's even better is that if you create categories for your notes, uh, you just create a folder, put the files in it, and Nextcloud will automatically detect that as categories, and this will allow you to organize and filter your notes. That's pretty cool. I also sync my contacts to Nextcloud, but that's pretty useless on the desktop side because I don't have a desktop contacts app. I don't need my contacts inside of my desktop. So yeah, they're synced to Nextcloud, but I don't really use them. And the thing I don't sync with Nextcloud yet is tasks. And there's a very simple reason for that. I use Planner. Planner is an awesome Elementor OS app that lets you manage your tasks, projects. And for now, it only syncs with a Todoist account. So that's what I'm using because I love this app. They are working on a WebDAV, CalDAV connection. So basically, this means that you will be able to sync your tasks to Nextcloud. And once that's done, that's what I'm going to use. But for now, I just use Planner. So my tasks are not synced through Nextcloud. This will probably happen soon. Okay, so that's it for how I get my files back and forth between my desktop and my laptop and my web interface. But how about mobile devices? Now this is where it becomes trickier. Linux doesn't have a mobile software ecosystem or any kind of mobile presence as of yet. You don't have a distribution that you can install on any phone and that will work correctly. You have options like the Librem 5 or the Pine phone, but honestly, these are not ready for real-time use for prime time. Well, at least not for me, and the app situation is just not enough for my needs. So I defaulted to slash E, which is a project I mentioned earlier. I'll leave a link to the video probably in the card up top here, and uh, you can check it out. It's basically a de-googled version of Android where they removed everything that calls home to Android, but it still has access to almost every single app from the Play Store, apart from the paid ones, through the Aurora Store and F-Droid. So basically, it's a de-googled Android version it's fantastic, I use it as my daily driver, and this is where it gets easy to sync with Nextcloud. The slash E system provides default applications that are not Google's. They are actually open source applications that they forked to make them look a little bit better or work a little bit better between them, and they can all sync to a Nextcloud account or to a simple DAV server, web DAV or call DAV. And so you have access to notes, to calendars, to tasks, to contacts, everything will just be pulled back through your Nextcloud account, which is pretty freaking awesome. So basically, I can create a contact in there and have it automatically sync on my Nextcloud web server or grab it on any desktop contacts app that I want. I can snap a picture and find it immediately inside of my pictures folder on my laptop or my desktop. I can create a note on my phone and have it immediately in my notes folder and edit it with any program of my choice. It's just super easy to use. And you can achieve the same results on any Android phone just by installing an app called DAVX5. It's paid for on the Google Play Store and free on F-Droid. On Android, you can also download the Nextcloud app, which is what I did, which lets you auto-upload your pictures to your Nextcloud account to grab them from any other computer and immediately get them back, and also allows you to uh, download uh, DAVX5 directly from the interface if you want to. It's a great application, it doesn't use much space, and it's really coming in handy if you're using Nextcloud and you want to sync back and forth through your mobile device to your desktop or laptop. If you're an iOS user though, I don't know if there's a solution. I don't have any Apple or iOS devices to try this on. There's probably a way to sync your DAV or CalDAV or anything to the default Apple apps, but I don't think notes will work. I don't think reminders will sync with, uh, with uh, your Nextcloud uh, tasks. I'm not sure that will work. And honestly, if you're using Apple devices, you're probably using multiple Apple devices and you probably already have access to an ecosystem, which is the Apple one, which is, well, a proprietary ecosystem, but it's still something. Okay, so now that I can create documents, notes, whatever, and transfer files super easily in automatic syncing between my mobile devices and my desktop and laptop, 
we need something to integrate the devices a little bit more close. And that's KD Connect. You probably already know about this one. It's a program you can use on any desktop environment, any distribution, and it allows you to just uh, send files between your phone and your desktop and vice versa. It allows you to receive notifications from your phone on your desktop or laptop and vice versa. It allows you to control media playback through your phone when you're playing music on your desktop. It's just a great nifty application. It doesn't integrate all that well with elementary OS, to be honest, but you can have a few workarounds that let it work fine. And if you're using KDE, it's native, directly integrated in it. And for GNOME, you have the JS Connect extension, which works pretty well. So give it a try. If you don't know about this, it's really a fantastic application. Now, on top of all these pipes connecting my devices and transferring files and interacting with each other, through Nextcloud, I also have a host of online services. I have access to OnlyOffice, which I talked about already in another video. It's a, basically a Microsoft Office 365 online uh, subscription, but for free that you can host on your Nextcloud server. It allows you to open files directly from the Nextcloud web interface. You have downloadable desktop editors to edit your files. It's compatible with Microsoft Office and the open document formats. It's a great Office suite. It's nice. If you have Nextcloud 19 or 20, I think you have Collabora Office, which I don't like as much, but works great as well. I can also have video conferencing through Nextcloud, uh, chats even with people that are not inside my Nextcloud account, although that is a little bit more complex to handle and probably a pain for people joining your Nextcloud uh, for the call, but it still exists. I also use the news app for Nextcloud, which allows me to sync all my RSS feeds into Nextcloud as well. And uh, that completely replaced Feedly for me, so that's a plus as well. And you could also sync bookmarks and passwords for your web browser inside of Nextcloud. I use Firefox. I like the Firefox sync and the Firefox account. It's working great. I also have the Firefox Lockwise application on my phone, which is basically my password manager. It integrates well. I don't think I need another solution that I would need to download an extension for. So I'm going to keep using the Firefox account. But if you really want to go all in through Nextcloud, know that these options exist. And there you have it. This is my complete ecosystem integrating a desktop running Elementor iOS, a laptop for work running Elementor iOS, a tablet running Android and Samsung One UI, and a phone running the slash E Android ROM. This is all integrated perfectly, just as well as it would be using an ecosystem of Apple devices. There's basically no difference in what I can do and what they can do with all these devices. What you're going to say then is, well, then we don't need a specific Linux ecosystem. We can already use Nextcloud and do our own thing. And yes, we can, but it's not that easy to set up. It took quite a bit of time to find the applications, to get the sync running, to install everything that I needed, to, to change the folder, sync connections to Nextcloud. It, it took a while, uh, about a few hours. It's definitely not a one-stop shop and a one-stop login connection. And if I hadn't been using the slash E operating system on my phone, it would have been even trickier because I would have to replace all the default applications from the manufacturer or from Google with other things that I would have to look up for myself. And that's a bit complex. And what I was trying to explain in my previous ecosystem video is not, is not that we can't achieve it. It's not that we can't do it because clearly we can. I just did it. But it's not easy. It's not simple. Setting up your own Nextcloud account, self-hosting it, then plugging in it to, into every single app that you want or you need is not a simple one-step process. And I think there should be a simple solution to just, when you create a new user account on Linux, click on a button that deploys your instance, you start paying for the service and you just log in and use that on every other single thing you want. Maybe a one-stop bundle install from Google Play for Android that will automatically install a set of applications that you can sync to. I think it would be a better solution and it would really make using Linux and syncing Linux into multiple devices a lot easier. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe for more videos like this one. And don't forget to turn on notifications if you do, because if you don't, it's basically useless to subscribe anymore. And uh, if you really want to help support the channel, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a monthly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the various topics that I'll cover next month. Check out the links in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!